Hello and welcome to F1 Livery Histories, the channel where we take a look back at the different paint jobs, racing trims and sponsor decals adopted by respective Formula 1 teams throughout the eras. Today we'll be taking a look at a constructor which formed part of the vanguard of technological innovation within Formula 1. An organisation that was at one point the world's largest manufacturer of open wheel racing cars, as well as a team that holds the unique distinction of being the only Formula 1 constructor to have ever fielded its very own team owner as a world drivers champion, Brabham. The Brabham Formula 1 team was founded in 1960 by then two-time Formula 1 World Drivers' Champion Jack Brabham, as well as racing car engineer Run Taranak as Motor Racing Developments Limited. The first ever chassis developed by the MRD company was the BT1 chassis, which derived its initials from Brabham and Taranak and competed in Formula Junior in 1961. The following year Brabham decided to go into racing for himself and entered his own team into Formula 1 for the 1962 season, operating out of Chessington in the United Kingdom. The team initially fielded a customer Lotus 24 chassis for the first five championship rounds, before debuting the climax-powered BT3, Brabham's first purpose-built Formula 1 chassis, at the 1962 German Grand Prix. Over time, Brabham cars would run with a green livery that employed a gold racing strip, representative of the national racing colours of Australia. In 1963, Jack Brabham would secure his eponymous team its first Formula 1 victory at the non-championship Solitude Grand Prix. 1963 was also the season which Brabham entered their BT7 chassis, the first Formula 1 car developed with the use of a wind tunnel and expanded to a two-car operation, with Dan Gurney joining Jack Brabham on driving duties. Gurney would go on to register the team's first championship victory at the 1964 French Grand Prix, piloting the BT7. The team would enter the BT11, which was used during 1964 and 1965. In 1966, the team introduced the BT19, the first Grand Prix car powered by Repco V8 engines. The 3 litre Repco engine proved to be an effective power unit that made up for its deficiencies in speed with unmatched reliability and fuel efficiency. Brabham Repco would finish on top of the manufacturer's standings in 1966 as their team leader Jack Brabham recorded the final of his three World Drivers Championships. This triumph also proved to be the first time an engine of Australian manufacturer powered a championship winning team. The following season, Brabham Repco would make it two clean sweeps in a row, as the team netted their second and final Constructors' Championship, and New Zealander Denny Hulme took out the driver's crown, piloting the B20 and B24 chassis. In 1968, the team introduced the Repco-powered B26. However, the Repco 860 series engine proved to be unreliable, and the team switched to the Ford DFV engine in 1969, racing the altered B26A chassis. For 1970, Jack Brabham's final season in Formula 1, the team fielded the BT33, which powered Sir Jack to his final Grand Prix victory at the season opener in South Africa. Following 1970, Jack Brabham would sell his controlling share in the team to Ron Toronak, who produced the BT34, which featured twin radiators mounted atypically ahead of the front tyres, and was the final Brabham car to race with the celebrated green and gold. So begins our retrospective on the racing liveries of the high-flying Brabham racing team. Prior to the 1972 season, Ron Taranak sold the team to business magnate and future F1 supremo, Bernie Eccleston. Eccleston began restructuring the team, and introduced the new white team livery as the team's cars began to display prominent sponsorship for the first time. The team raced with backing from various Argentine industries, as well as US petroleum company Bartel and Italian ceramics company Pagnosum. However, the team struggled to compete with the top of the field during 1972, a season which saw the team race with three different chassis altogether namely the BT-33, the BT-34, and the BT-37. In 1973, the team produced the Gordon Murray-designed BT-42, which featured a decidedly triangular shape. In 1974, the team attracted Japanese electronics company Hitachi and switched to Fina lubricants with the arrival of the all-new and aerodynamically brilliant BT-44 chassis. The Brabham team were experiencing a renaissance, and the following season would herald the commencement of one of Formula One's most celebrated business partnerships. Beginning in 1975, Italian alcohol brand Martini and Rossi became the leading sponsor of the Brabham team, which saw the Cosworth-powered BT44B adopt the famous Martini stripes. The team enjoyed a successful season in 1975, and went to welcome back one of Formula 1's most distinguished engine manufacturers to the fold in 1976, as Alfa Romeo became the official engine supplier of the Brabham team. 
the new BT45 was now painted in Alfa Romeo red, linking up nicely with Martini's branding to create an exceptionally elegant livery. The team also first introduced reinforced carbon brakes to their car partway through 1976. This revolutionary braking system would eventually become commonplace on all Formula 1 cars by the 1980s. The team raced the BT45B chassis into 1977 with an unchanged team livery. However, Brabham's consortium with Martini proved to be a relatively short-term proceeding, paving the way for Brabham to once again introduce another of Formula 1's most closely associated sponsors the following season. In 1978, Italian Consumables Corporation Parmalat first appeared on the car, marking their newly established association with Brabham. The team introduced the BT46 chassis at the South African Grand Prix, before launching the refurbished BT46B chassis, known as the Fan Car, at the 1978 Swedish Grand Prix. The Gordon Murray designed car was developed in response to the Lotus 78, and was able to generate extensive downforce thanks to a large engine fan mounted upon the rear of the car, which was integrated with the car's engine, and created an intrinsic amount of suction beneath the car the faster it travelled. Alas, the BT46B was banned by the FAA following its one and only appearance in Sweden, a race duly won by Niki Lauda. In 1979, the team ran with the BT48. The car's side pods were now dark blue, and occupied by title sponsors Parmalat. Late in the season, the team would debut the all-new BT49, a car developed and run by the team over the course of the next three seasons. At this time, the team also switched to Agip fuels. The following year, Alfa Romeo parted with Brabham to focus its efforts on its new factory team. And so Brabham would return in 1980 to the DFV engine, fielding the revised BT49B. The team's cars were now kitted out in white and navy blue, and featured bold blue stripes which ran along the side of the car, meeting in a V at the front of the vehicle, which created an aggressive contrast in colours, and represented the Brabham team well. 1980 was also the season Brabham began using ELF fuels. In 1981, Nelson Piquet, piloting the Ford-powered BT49C, took out the first of his three driver's titles. Piquet's championship winning car featured additional sponsorship from Mexican oil company Pemex, and ran with Michelin rubber. In 1982, the Brabham team would once again reintroduce another of Formula 1's most widely regarded engine manufacturers to the grid, as they became the first team to race with BMW turbocharged engines. The team reverted back to Goodyear rubber, and changed to Valvoline fuels, as the BMW BT50 was first raced at the 1982 South African Grand Prix. It was during this season that the team reintroduced the science of mid-race refueling to Formula 1. Parmalat also began displaying their juice brand Santal on the car throughout the course of the year. PK achieved his second World Drivers' Championship and the very first turbo-powered championship in 1983 in a close-fought contest behind the wheel of the BT-52. The team's cars were once again shod with Michelin tyres, whilst clothing brand Filler joined the team and Castrol became the latest fuel supplier to the Brabham team. In 1984, the team ran with the BT-53, a further development of the previous year's car, which was the final Brabham car to display Parmalat branding. With the team's owner Bernie Eccleston beginning to shift ever more of his focus elsewhere, the team's future began to look uncertain. Business products brand Olivetti picked up the space vacated by former title sponsors Parmalat, as the team retained its white and blue combination for the BT-54. This came about along with a change to Pirelli rubber. The BT-54 would prove to be the final race-winning chassis developed by Brabham, when PK took the team's final win at the 1985 French Grand Prix. For the 1986 season, the team produced the radical low-line BT55 chassis, as they continued to diverge from the rest of the field design-wise. Fashion brand Emporio Armani signed with the team, acquiring space on the car's engine cover. Following 1986, long-time designer Gordon Murray would sign on with rivals McLaren. In 1987, the team made a return to Goodyear, but by now BMW had begun to step back their involvement with the team. Iceberg, Ricard, and Aqua Velva had gained space on the new car, featuring on the engine case and sides of the rear wing, respectively. It was at this juncture that ownership of the Brabham Formula 1 concern underwent a series of changes. Following the 1987 season, Eccleston decided to rest the team for 1988, as he seek to offload MRD Limited. The team was sold to Eurobrun team owner Walter Brunn, who in turn sold it shortly thereafter to Swiss financier Joachim Lutti. Lutti would revive the team, as they rejoined the F1 grid in 1989 with the all-new Judd-powered BT-58. 
Again, the Brabham was dressed in white and blue, but now carried sponsorship from Bioptron, Amigo and Nippon Shinpan, and ran with Pirelli rubber and ELF lubricants. The team's owner was then arrested for tax fraud in mid-1989, prompting a dispute over ownership of the Brabham concern. Eventually, Middlebridge Group Limited, a Japanese engineering firm, purchased the team outright with funds borrowed from financial lenders and rebased it to Milton Keynes. This new management was reflected upon the livery of the BT-59, Brabham's 1990 chassis, which carried numerous Japanese sponsors, along with the knitwear brand Euro Jersey. In 1991, the team signed with Yamaha engines and BP fuels, racing the revised BT-59Y, before eventually producing the BT-60, the final purpose-built Formula 1 car developed by the Brabham racing team. 1991 saw the team attracting a queue of smaller sponsors, such as Autobax, Mitsukoshi, Mitsui, Sumitomo Marine, Madras, Lease Plan, and Yamazin, as the colour red was also reintroduced to the team livery. 1992 oversaw a switch back to Judd engines and a change of team colours, as the BT-60B was now dressed in three distinct pink, light blue and dark blue panels. However, the team was unable to see at the 1992 season, as the Middlebridge group went into administration, spelling the end of Brabham's 30-year association with Formula One.